Hello Kiri boys, how is everyone out there? Um, hope you guys are well and I hope that you've managed to get the interest of many sponsors and that uh, together we'll raise a great big pile for Founders Day. Now you have had uh, bits of information coming your way about what we're doing today. You'd have gone out, got some ingredients. Um, this video you'll be able to pause it and you'll be able to keep up with everything. There's nothing complicated about this. It's a great dish. You may be doing this on your own. You may have a mother, you may have a, a parent or a guardian with you and they may very well want to get involved in this. In which case, just give them a look, okay? Give them a look. This is for you to do, okay? So uh, we've got different parts of this dish. It's a biryani, so it's a, a vegetarian biryani. Uh, we're going to be using the jackfruit. The jackfruit is a monster fruit, a monster tropical fruit. These things can be 20 kilos more in weight and they're attached like really huge, uh, like an ear really, hanging off the side of the, uh, the stem of, uh, of the tree. And um, very uh, meaty, textured fruit. And in India they call it vegetarian mutton. Um, Numerous parts of this dish, we are going to be boiling water to uh, boil some spices in. These whole spices will be dotted throughout the rice dish. We're going to be making the jackfruit uh, vegetable dish itself into a, uh, a delicious side dish, which you can have on your own, or in this case, we're going to put it in with our biryani. And uh, we are also going to be adding some fried onion rings really important for any biryani dish. So, uh, first thing to do is we are gonna get some rice and we're gonna it, uh, rinse it out. So here's a, just pour it in a pot, add a load of water, get your finger in there, squiggle it about, and then you'll see that the rice will, uh, the water will start going milky in color. Uh, give it a really good rinsing. And uh, if you do happen to have an assistant with you, they can be doing that, rinsing it under the tap, uh, and then straining it out, and then just leaving it to soak uh, while we get on with the rest of the dish. My assistant, in fact, is going to do that now. Uh, as mentioned, um, key thing in biryani is fried onions. So we're gonna be frying a load of onions. Um, this one is a, a kind of a medium onion. Um, what we're aiming for is slices about a centimetre thick. Now, some of you may want your assistant to do some chopping for you. Uh, that's fine. Otherwise, just hold the onion firmly. Keep a good eye on where you're cutting and just go slowly. No need to rush, no need to do, we're going to be doing some other onion chopping. You don't have to do all that really sort of fast restaurant chopping because you're not in a restaurant. This is just a very casual way of spending, enjoyable way of spending some time, okay, in the kitchen. Some of you guys will be doing a load of cooking anyway uh, and you're happy chopping and cooking things. If you're not, you know, this is, this is something which is supposed to be enjoyable. Okay, so if you don't want you uh, thinking, oh, that's sharp, or that's hot, and that's dangerous, it's all going to be uh, quite casual. Um, I've got a little stove here. I'm just going to preheat it. You've got your uh, hob, which you're working on. I'm going to take six tablespoons of oil. Okay, one tablespoon is 15 mil, okay? One tablespoon is three teaspoons, okay? So those of you who are hot on your maths, you know we are adding, uh, how much are we adding? We are adding 90 mil of um, oil, okay? And I may even have just lost count, but anyway, six tablespoons of oil in there, Bring it up to a high heat, okay? And if you've got, look, I've got a little piece of 
onion here. And if you're thinking, how do I know when, I, when the oil's ready? Well, here's a little piece of onion. We know, we just put the oil in, it's not going to be hot. But in a few moments, I'll drop a little piece of onion in. If it starts sizzling, we're good to go. So, this thing of a, a biryani, um, in the subcontinent, uh, whether you're in uh, Pakistan or South India, um, Kerala or Hyderabad, these are the places where uh, people really love their biryanis. It's a very special dish. It's not just rice mixed with a meat curry or a veg curry. It is the dish, the whole dish is cooked all in one. So the veg and the rice all cooked together. We're going to be cooking it in our oven. So you do need to preheat your oven. So if you've got your assistant here, uh, go tell them to preheat the oven, empty the oven out, preheat it to 200 degrees. Okay, they can do that now. You can pause this and they can go and do that, or you can go and do that. Let's check our oil now. Just dropping a little piece of uh, onion in. It's just starting to sizzle, okay? So, yeah, it's definitely starting to sizzle. So I'm just gonna place my onions in carefully, okay? Just slide them in there. And I've got, um, I filled my pan with onion, okay? In fact, some are just balanced on top of others, okay? Now I'm just going to bring the heat down a bit and we'll just sprinkle a little bit of salt over them. And we'll give them a little twizzle and a turn every now and then. Okay, in fact my assistant's going to take that away and look after those. So let's have a look at our uh, biryani, um, the main part of the biryani. So, thank you. Here's my jackfruit. Now I mentioned that this is a, a massive fruit. It's easiest to buy it in cans because the raw fruit itself, uh, if you were to buy the raw ingredient, it, if you were to cut it, it releases quite a, a sticky sap. So you don't, you have to oil your hands, you have to do a lot of uh, work to uh, uh, get this into small pieces. So canned um, jackfruit is great. And it will be, it'll, it'll maybe in plain water, probably in brine, okay? So I've strained out my jackfruit and I've kept the liquid. Keep the liquid, reserve the liquid, we'll be using that. And I'm just going to chop these jackfruit pieces just into slightly smaller pieces. Okay, so kind of this size. Here's a typical piece you'll get in the can. Okay, so cut, chop that into two or three pieces. Nice uh, bite-sized pieces. Okay, so just spend a moment and do that. Not all of them will need chopping, it's just the ones which are really big. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you can see, you'll see that there are uh, seed pods in this thing. It's got quite a fibrous texture to it. And taste it, you can taste it, you can eat it now. It's pretty much uh, uh, cooked, or well, not cooked, it's... Um, it's in a form which is edible now, so uh, you'll see these interesting little pods. You may even see little seeds as well, okay, tiny rounded seeds there. So that's our jackfruit biryani. What we want to do now is stick the kettle on, boil up uh, about a litre of water. I'm going to go and just grab my water. Uh, can I have the kettle of hot water, please? Okay, and... Stick it on the gas. Put the hot water in your pan. An excess amount of water. This is the water we're going to actually cook the rice in. But for the time being, we're just going to add our whole spice ingredients. So we've got cloves, We've got a stick of cinnamon, got some bay leaf, 
and we've got these cardamoms. These are the really exciting aromatic uh, spice. And this is cumin. Okay, so easy available cumin. People, I, I love cumin. I put cumin, cumin in and everything. So that's gone in with uh, my peppercorns as well. So the peppercorns, uh, those of you who are feeling a little bit bold, you can just crunch down on a peppercorn. And that is the native heat of the subconscious. That, rather than these things. These things are not native to Asia. These things are native to South America. So the native heat is the black peppercorn. Okay, and that's native, that's, uh, um, native to southern India. So all those spices have gone into that hot water. We're going to bring it to the boil. And then we're just going to let it simmer. So we'll just part that to one side. Now, I don't know if any of you have something like this. This is a, a nice round bottomed wok. Um, you can use that or you can just cook it in a pot. Okay. Now, some of that oil which we are cooking our onions in, we want that back because we're going to be using that to um, cook our jackfruit in. A little bit of prep first though. Here is uh, a smallish onion. Uh, I'm going to take at least half an onion. I'm looking how much jackfruit I've got. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll probably use all of that. Okay. So this little small onion, which is a little smaller in size than a tennis ball, uh, we're going to chop that in, uh, uh, chop this up. So cut it in half. Okay. And then just make one two, three, four incisions down the, the top of the onion. Don't cut it all the way through, okay? And then we're going to cut across, and that's how you dice your onion. Okay, don't worry if you didn't get that. You've got two halves of the onion, so you've got two goes. And the bit which you haven't cut through, you can just chop up roughly, okay? So I'll show you that again. There's going to be uh, some of you who do plenty of cooking and you have no problem with this. My water's come to the boil, I'm just going to turn that down just to a, a low, a gentle simmer. Okay, and we're going to come back to that water in a moment. So, here is, in fact, turn it down way low, as low as you can. Okay, uh, here's our half onion. I'm going to cut it here. Here, here, I'm hoping you can see this, okay, but I'm, what I'm not going to do is cut it all the way across, okay, so one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. Those are all nicely diced. And this bit, which we didn't cut through, is in one piece. I'm just going to just chop that up. There you go. Done. Okay, so the onions are done. Now, um, we're going to make a, a garlic and ginger paste. I've got a little whizzy thing. Some of you, if you ask the people you live with, do we have a whizzy thing which we can make a garlic and ginger paste with? They might offer up something like this, okay? Or they may not, in which case they might say, use a mortar and pestle, okay? And you have to do a little bit of work. So, I've got here five really fat bulbs of garlic. If you are, I'm gonna use my whizzy thing, but if you don't have a whiz, uh, a grinder, and you're gonna be using a mortar and pestle, chop your garlic up as fine as you can, okay? We're just into uh, small chunks like so, okay? And do the same for the ginger. Don't bother peeling your ginger, you guys are busy, okay? I mean, you've got loads of stuff going on in your life. You haven't got time for peeling ginger. If you've got people watching over your shoulder going, tutting away, saying, peel the ginger, 
give them the look, okay? Out of here. Uh, just chop up your ginger into small pieces, put it in your mortar and pencil, and do it a little bit by a little bit, and you'll end up with a nice paste, okay? This is a little bit harder than your garlic, so you will have to chop it up finer, okay? Uh, you could even grate it and put that in the mortar and pestle. What we want is a nice soft paste. But I've got this whizzy thing. Some of you will have uh, little small blenders, okay? So this is going in. And I'm using a, an equal amount of garlic and ginger. In fact, I've got, I reckon I've got slightly more ginger. I'm a, a real ginger file. I love ginger. And the thing about cooking, is you want things which are to your taste. So if you're you know, mad for the ginger, have a little bit more in. If you prefer a little bit more garlic, the flavors, put a little bit more in, okay? So that's in there. And now I'm just gonna whiz this up. a little bit like uh, porridge. Now we're going to use some of this garlic and ginger paste for our jackfruit biryani. We're also going to be putting some in for our writer. We're going to be making poppy granite writer. So that's something which we uh, are going to have on the side. So it's like a, a yogurty um, salad. Okay, there's a whole world of varieties. You could be using cucumber, beetroot, other little uh, onions, whatever. But we're going to make a really sort of a beautiful looking one. Very um, stylish pomegranate writer, which will give us nice juicy bursts of uh, sweetness as we eat. Okay, so we've got a nice contrast. So here's our garlic and ginger paste. Uh, we've got our onions frying. We've got our spices uh, simmering away there. So we're just going to have a look at our onions because we want to take the oil back from those onions. Have you done with the onions? Halfway. Okay, let's, uh, let me, can we, can, you want them nice and golden. Can I take some out? Uh, okay. we're, we're going to take some of the oil. Let's have a look at these onions. So, if I tilt this carefully, you can see we're picking up a little bit of oil there, uh, colour there. Okay, and did we put any salt in? Yes. So we're going to continue with that until they are golden all the way through. So that's going to take another um, five or six minutes there. Okay, so meanwhile, let's have a look at some of our other ingredients. This um, biryani is uh, a great family dish. You want to show your friends and family, whoever you're sharing with, that uh, you are uh, showing them the love. So we're going to add a few things which are a little bit more exciting and interesting. This is a dried plum. Um, find these in the north of India and also into Afghanistan and Pakistan. They're lovely uh, tangy plums. They will have a stone in it. Okay, so but there's no reason why you couldn't use other dried uh, plums. You don't have to specifically have these Alubukara plums. Um, here are some cranberries. Okay, cranberries are a lot easier to get hold of and great for just. Uh, in your mouth as you are going along. We have these quite hot chilies here. Now, um, not everyone is mad for the chili heat, and these ones will be hot. Okay, these are small bird eye chilies. So it's entirely up to you. Um, just so you know, 
if you want to have a little taste of this chilli, so just to check whether it's on the hot side, the tip, the pointy end, is the mildest part of the chilli. It's got the least amount of seed and pith. So that's the mildest part of the chilli. So you could just chop the last half centimetre off and think, have a little nibble. Is that hot for me? If it is hot, really hot, fine. You might just want to not use three or four. You might just want to use uh, one or two. But we are going to be cooking our chilies quite early on in the cooking process. Okay, so the earlier you cook your chilies, the milder the overall outcome. If you really want to have something which is uh, all singing and dancing, uh, then you could add your chilies later on. You could just maybe even just sprinkle some in to the biryani uh, rice itself. We're going to be uh, cooking our biryani rice only for a, a couple of minutes. And then we are going to be uh, layering uh, our jackfruit, our cooked jackfruit, with the cooked rice, with our, our partially cooked rice. And then we're going to be we're going to be putting it in. Uh, I've got this Le Creuset quite heavy type pot. Um, put it in in layers. There, we'll sprinkle in some of these plums and or cranberries, and we're going to stick it in the oven. Uh, for half an hour. So, if you want to go ahead, pause and taste the chilli, go ahead with that. Uh, we've got a little bit of garam masala. So garam masala is basically a blend of some warming spices. It might be things like pepper, cardamom, uh, mace, star anise, all sorts of uh, those beautiful uh, really powerful spices you get in the subcontinent. The reason why lots of people from Europe are really keen to go and explore these parts of the world is to get hold of these spices. Okay, so a garam masala is a blend. Uh, those of you who are of uh, have uh, an Asian background, you more than likely have your own uh, blend. Your parents or your family may have their own blend. Otherwise, you've got a shop for one. It doesn't really matter. Anything which um, you're used to. So uh, while we are waiting for our onions just to brown a bit more, just let's have a look at our pomegranate. Um, much loved fruit is the pomegranate, but it does require a bit of work. And it's juicy with, uh, it's like it's bleeding. So um, now, there's all sorts of uh, ways of extracting the seeds of the pomegranate. The seeds of the pomegranate, you all know what I mean about these little seeds here. They are lovely. Um, there's different types of pomegranate. Some of them, if you look at a pomegranate your seed, you'll see that it has uh, a, a central, hard central bit, a stone, my mum calls them. And these can be, so on some pomegranates, they're, they're bigger uh, than others. And uh, it's much nicer if they're small. So it's always worthwhile having a little taste. These ones are quite hard. So this, this, the, the, the stone inside is quite um, large. Um, there you go. Uh, towards November time, you get a different crop of pomegranates coming in from another part of the world, and those ones are very nice indeed. Now, if you were to just peel back the rind of the pomegranate, and you can see that it's got all this pith, you do not want that. That is really bitter. Not bitter, it's very stringent, it's very drying on the uh, taste buds. So what you can do is just gently peel these seeds out. Okay, you hear a very pleasant, crunchy noise as they pull away from this pit. Now, there are numerous hacks, numerous ways in which people will tell you how you can get the seeds of the pomegranate out really easily. And they might say, cut your pomegranate in half and whack it with a hammer. Fine. I mean, but you're going to have pomegranate all over the place. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with spending just a little bit of time, you don't need to be in a rush to do everything, okay? Here's our beautiful looking pomegranate seeds there. You don't need to be in a rush to do everything. We're just 
hanging out, having a little bit of fun here. And uh, while we're waiting for all these onions to cook, we're just going to spend a little bit of time casually pulling apart some pomegranate seeds. If you've got other people in the room with you, you could be chatting to them. You could give them some of the pomegranates to do. Definitely get them doing that kind of work. Um, especially if you've got a grandmother. It seems to be the, the role, one of the key roles of a grandmother is to do this kind of, frankly, laborious task, okay? And they do it without complaining, apart from my grand, uh, she did complain. Now, here we have our, our onions are back. Okay, so we've got our fried onions. So I'm going to hand over pomegranate duty to my assistant and uh, she's going to do that and she's going to enjoy doing it because it is, as mentioned, a very beautiful way of spending some time. Okay, so let's just uh, clear off that. Okay, so... Time to start cooking, guys. So, you've got your hob, I've got my little gas stove here. The oil which the onions were cooked in, we want to use. Okay, so whether you're cooking it in a pot or whether you've got something like this, that's fine. I'm just going to carefully tip out that oil. And I might not use all of it, so I'm probably going to use about three tablespoons, okay? And uh, but we we want to keep this oil because this oil is going to go into our rice. Once we finally get to cooking our rice, we want to use this oil just to uh, add a little flavour to our rice. Okay, so. Part of that on one side, and here I've got about uh, three tablespoons of oil. A little bit more. And now, if you've not cooked with spices before, no one wants to burn their spices. So the easiest thing, this oil is still quite warm. Let's just get some cumin seeds and uh, pop them in. I've taken a large. Uh, couple of pinches of cumin seeds. They're not fizzing, okay? So we know the oil is not hot. So on goes the gas. And when these start fizzing nicely, then we know things are ready for us to start adding our other ingredients. So the ingredients we're gonna be adding here are cumin seeds, we've got our garlic and ginger paste, we've got our diced onions, uh, we've got some turmeric powder and we have a tomato. Now, if you're using chilies, you're going to slice up your chilies fine and uh, pop them in. Um, but if you don't want any chili action in there, just leave them. So things are starting to fizz up in my oil here. Okay, so I'm going to add, uh, so, so far we have just a couple of pinches of cumin in there, and we've got our small onion which we've diced up, okay, and we're going to put the onion in. Now don't do anything crazy like thinking, uh, like, uh, just because there is this large amount of oil in front of you, you, you might think it's safer for you to drop your onion to a great height, but all that will do is just send oil splashing on you and anyone near you. Just go in low, you can just keep it in the bowl like this, just go in low, okay? No danger for anyone. So we've got a nice sizzle going on here. Now, those of you using chilies, you might want to put your chilies in now. 
And we're just going to cut these onions down until they're translucent. And add a little bit of salt. Remember, guys, you can pause at any time. If you think, well, what's going on? What have I missed? Just pause and just rewind. And we'll get these uh, to go translucent. I'm just going to turn my gas down a little bit. So what we did there, we put some whole spices in, whole spices, not powders. We put our whole spices, in this case our cumin seeds, we put those in. And then we put our fresh or wet ingredients in, as it were. Okay, and then I'm going to be adding my garlic and ginger paste. Now, I'm just going to, at the moment, my onions are, they're not translucent, so they're not quite uh, sea brewish. But I'll still add my garlic and ginger paste. So just remember, if you, are, if you want to put your chilies in now, slice them up. You can either slice them lengthways or chop them up into little rings and put them in. Okay? They will cook away nicely with your onions. I'm going to be adding... There's one tablespoon. I'm going to be adding a couple of tablespoons of garlic and ginger paste. Remember, that's about 50-50 garlic and ginger. Now you put that in and you will get this delicious waft of garlic and ginger coming up. Those of you who, don't, who didn't have a mortar and pestle, I should have said, don't worry, you could have just chopped it up really fine, as fine as possible, and uh, that would be good enough. Those of you who are using the paste, you might see that it's starting to stick. Okay, so make sure it's, it doesn't. So keep it moving. And we're going to cook it just until that, that really strong smell of garlic and ginger starts to uh, disappear. To subside. I'm going to add a teaspoon of a level, a teaspoon, if you've got a measuring spoon, it's a level, not a heat one. One teaspoon is a level spoon of uh, turmeric powder in this case. You put the turmeric powder in and you see this beautiful colour change happening. Turn your gas down. If things are still getting quite sticky, just turn your gas down. Okay, my onions are almost translucent. So now I'm going to add a tomato. Now it doesn't really matter how you uh, chop up your tomato. You can just do it so it's in, chop it in half. Half again. five slices this way and then we've got uh, all these small bits of tomato here. So those are going to go in. And this is going to add a nice juiciness to the dish. And because we're not going to cook our rice for very long, only a couple of minutes, it's still going to be uncooked obviously. All this moisture from your tomatoes and the jackfruit, uh, that's going to steam through the rice and cook the rice. So we want our jackfruit, our tomatoes, so we cook down to a pulp. Now, I've got a, a bunch of coriander here. So 
see these thicker stem bits, I really like them. Some people don't realise that you can use them, you can eat them. Uh, so I'm going to chop these up really fine and we're going to put them into our dish. So get your coriander stems. When you do chopping like this, always keep the tip of your blade on the board. Okay? And you don't have to keep your fingers well away. In fact, it's, you want to keep your fingers fairly close to the blade so you can keep whatever it is you're chopping under control and just gently pull back your fingers when you get closer to them. So in your case, maybe if you keep your fingertips about a centimetre away from the blade, just cut down slowly, no rush. Remember, there's no customers waiting for this in a busy restaurant. You can just work quietly and methodically. You might even have some music on in the background. That's a great thing to do. Okay, and I'm gonna put those in. Okay, so I've got a sticky dish here, if you can see that, yeah. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my jackfruit pieces, and I'm going to tip those in there. I'm going to fold them in. Hopefully you've got a, a lovely smelling, but also a very colourful looking dish. So far. There's a large piece there, just chop that up. Okay, and now I did say to reserve the water which the jackfruit came in, so I'm going to add half a cup. This is a half cup measure, but basically about 120 ml of this reserved liquid. Okay, that's going to go in. Find a bit more. So now we've got something which is definitely on the very wet side. Okay, so we're just going to cook that down till the jackfruit pieces a little bit softer, till that tomato is certainly uh, become much more pulpy. Okay, remember guys, pause at any moment that you feel like and You can always go over it again. So my tomato is looking nice and pulpy. Now there's a few sort of largest bits, largish bits, which I'm just mashing up there. And now remember, as home cooks, you are allowed to taste this. Okay, so if you grab yourself a spoon, and then you can just taste a little bit of the liquid, and then you can start thinking to yourself, whoops, did I put a few too many chilies in? Or actually, would I like to have a little bit more chilli heat in? In which case, it's never too late to have a little bit of sliced chilli, you can do that. And you might also want to think, have I added enough seasoning? Have I added enough salt? So get it to the flavour that you like. And now we've got our garam masala powder. Let's tip that in. That's a teaspoon of garam masala powder. Uh, Taste again, see the difference, what happens when you add that garam masala powder. Okay, so this is, I'm going to leave this now. So we've cooked this for about five or six minutes. Have a little taste of the jackfruit. And just think, well, you know, how's that developing from the initial thing which I ate uh, from the can? Okay. Um, you might think, you know, jackfruit is not for me, so another day you could do this dish, but you could use cauliflower florets, maybe some um, uh, chunks of aubergine, if, if you like aubergine. I know often a lot of, uh, it's not often until later in life that you might appreciate vegetables like aubergine. Some of you may love them, but you could uh, maybe have chunks of carrots, um, florets of bro broccoli, your, the things which you like. You could even put a can of chickpeas in it, you know, cook it like this and have a, a chickpea. Here we are. Okay, so look, that we're going to leave, turn the gas off, that's fine. 
You know that I didn't put any chillies in, okay? But remember, if you do want chillies, put that in. Um, some of you may have chilli powder. If you're thinking, well, uh, I don't have the fresh chillies, there you go, you'll get chilli powder. So let's move that to one side now. I'm just going to take this over here. Now your oven will be heating up and hopefully you've got something which is heavy like this in a Creuset style pot. If not, you may just have some kind of casserole dish. Uh, hopefully it's got a tight fitting lid. Okay, if you haven't got a tight fitting lid, then you can cover whatever you've got with some foil. I'm going to be using foil as well, so that's going to give us two bits of protection. This is a heavy lid with the foil, that should be enough. The reason being is that we want whatever moisture we have from our jackfruit, which we've cooked, and from the rice, which we're going to start cooking in a moment, we want all of that heat and all that moisture to turn into steam to steam and cook the rice. So we want everything has to be sealed as tightly as possible. So we now require you to have a stopwatch. Get your phones ready. Let's go back to our pots of simmering water, which has the cardamoms, the cloves, the peppercorns, the cumin, the cinnamon. I mean, if, you're, if you've got some other spices which you're really keen on, those could have gone in here, okay? So that is going, uh, we're gonna bring this back up to the boil. We are going to put our rinsed rice into this hot water, and we are gonna boil it for three minutes, okay? So you need to get your stopwatches ready, okay? So bring the water back up to the boil, Okay, that's just about going for it. Now I'm going to put my rice in, okay, and I've got my assistant is just going to be doing the time. When you put the rice in, we want the, you're going to start your stopwatch when the water comes back, when, when the water comes back up to the boil. So when you put your rice in, that rice is going to cool the water down. It won't start boiling straight away, okay, so... So it's not quite ready yet. And you need to have the same sieve handy, the sieve which you uh, drained your rice out in the first place. And we are, yep, things are starting to boil, so three minutes, please. Now, on your um, Hop, you'll have a bigger ring, maybe, and so that might have happened a little bit more quickly. You can hear it bubbling away nicely. So you can see that there, there are different parts of this dish, but actually there's nothing particularly complicated going on. However, the final outcome is going to look brilliant, okay? Now this bit, it's a bit like washing water boil, okay, so uh, it's not hugely exciting, so I'm going to just chop up some coriander while I'm waiting. Got this great work done here on the pomegranates. Hopefully, if you've got any team members helping you, they've done that. So that's about minute one. So 
So this bowl had the jackfruit in, so I'm still I'm just going to put my pomegranate pieces in here. I might not use them all, all of them, I might keep some. Maybe just a sprinkle on the biryani at the end. Just a few. Or just a scoff for yourself now. Okay, so if you've got a load of pomegranate seeds now, while you watch waiting for your pot to boil, start eating them. seconds. So don't forget the oven should be preheated. So what we're going to do now is strain out the rice. I'm just going to swap this for a larger slip. So if you look at the rice, you'll, you'll see that it will have extended itself. It will have become larger, but it's not quite cooked. So there's all our lovely uh, rice plus spice. So now, I've still got a little bit of oil left in my pan from the onions, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of that oil into my heavy pot. Okay, just pass that oil all around the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to take uh, just a little bit of rice with those spices and I'm just going to cover the base with a thin layer of rice and now I'm going to start adding uh, a layer of our jackfruit. You've tasted this, hopefully you know it tastes good, also it's seasoned to your taste. What you can do is just adding a slightly, a little extra salt, okay, just because this has to uh, flavour the rice as well, okay, so here's our jackfruit, and I'm going to put a layer of that, half of it, on top of that thin layer of rice, Oh, my stomach's rumbling. Okay, and spread it across. Okay, I've got some of this coriander. I'll have a little layer of coriander over there as well. And now I'm going to put half this rice on top. In goes the saffron, uh, the cinnamon stick. Okay. You might be thinking, what's going on with all these layers? Don't overthink it, guys. This is just a lovely thing to do. It's a very classic way of preparing uh, a much-loved dish in the subcontinent. This is just what people do. Okay, so just enjoy it for what it is. I've got some of my plums. Okay, so one, two. How many people are you feeding? You might want to give everyone the option to have a, a couple of these uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, or eight, however many we're doing. If you're using cranberries, sprinkle a, a few of the cranberries. You don't want too many cranberries. You don't want every mouthful to have something sweet in it. It's just every now and then you get a mouthful and it's, uh, you've got this kind of um, lovely sh uh, sweet burst coming across. Now I'm going to put the other layer of my jackfruit in. Sorry, I'm going to put the other half of it in. Okay, 
and then level that. Just make sure there's uh, chunks are evenly distributed. Okay, so it's starting to look like that. Okay, one little sprinkle of coriander. A few more. Actually, I'm going to leave these plums for the top. Okay, so because of the remainder of my rice. So a lot of uh, feeding yourself is feeding your eyes, okay? So it's not just necessary about getting something down. I want to make things look uh, nice, okay? So uh, let's put some of our plums in. Remainder of our plums. Now we've got our fried onions. So we're going to add fried onions on top with the remaining oil, remaining oil. Okay, that oil is being poured in. And you could actually have put some of these onions on top of the, uh, the layer below. Okay, I've gone and put all mine on top because I got slightly distracted. Okay, but still, make it they look great these onions lovely golden touch to it put the last bit of oil okay so we've got something like that I can still just add a little pinch of coriander there so you've got something which is layered like that I'm going to get enough foil just to cover this Make sure your lid is firmly in place, okay? Make sure it's just ridden up by accident, otherwise you'll lose all that steam. Now, your oven has been preheated to 200 degrees, and it goes uh, for 30 minutes. My, assistant, my lovely assistant is going to put that in. Okay, and back to our, the final aspect of this dish is what are we going to do with all these lovely uh, pomegranate seeds? We are going to make a pomegranate raita. So I've asked you to keep hold of just getting rid of a few little bits of pith. Okay, if you don't believe me about the pith being very stringent, try a bit, okay? But you do want to try these, uh, try some pomegranate seeds, let's see. Quite tangy, whoa! So, not exactly sweet. Uh, and also, they're a little bit uh, crunchy, so... Um, there you go, you get what you get at this time of year. Okay, we've got some uh, yoghurt here. Now, um, you could use sour cream. You don't just have to have plain yogurt or natural yogurt. You could be using Greek yogurt or you could be using sour cream, whatever. Depending on how rich you want to make it, you might want to keep it quite simple. So we've got our yogurt here, enough to make a thick writer. of uh, really finely chopped coriander just to scatter over or you could just have one or two leaves if you wish now uh, I did say have a chilli if you want to add a little bit of heat to this you could slice a chilli lengthways scoop out the seeds and then finely chop that chilli just to give it a little bit of a kick if you don't want to do that that's fine 
And what really is worth doing is just tasting this now. So grab yourself a spoon, have a little taste of this. You might think, well, that's okay, but I'd quite like a little bit of salt in there. In that case, add a little bit of salt. Some of you may even have some cumin powder. You might think, well, I want a little bit of cumin powder in there. Uh, and we've got a little bit of garlic and ginger paste. So what you can do is just take a little bit of this Add a tiny little bit of uh, garlic and ginger paste and some salt. And if you're using cumin powder, put some cumin powder, put a tiny bit of chilli in and just have a little pre-taste. Because you might think, well, you know what, it's lovely enough without, you know, it's gilding the lily. I just need the yoghurt and the pomegranate, that's good enough for me. Okay, so make a little side bowl. Have a little taste. If you think, no, that's where I want to be, then you're going to add a little bit into your rice here, okay? If you've got one of those silicone spatulas, you can just clean around here, just to make things look a little bit nice. You can keep one or two pomegranate seeds just to scatter on top to make it look nice. If you are using cumin powder, if you want to have that cumin taste, then you could just maybe sprinkle it in with your initials, okay? You've done this, own it, okay? So, uh, and do that, okay? We're going to get the writer out when it's ready, I mean, sorry, the biryani out when it's ready, and I'll show you what to do uh, next, okay? Okay, so, Time has passed. Here is our biryani. Now, careful, it's gonna be hot. Okay, you can see the steam coming out there. And just take a little peek inside, it's great. Okay, you can see all these lovely plump grains of rice. So basically, what you want to do is get yourself a nice big platter. Okay, we're gonna tip this out, fold all the jackfruit through, and then you'll deal that out in your uh, individual serving bowls. Okay, so here it goes. You can see there's a little bit of crunchy rice right at the base. Okay, and rice going over the top. Okay guys, so just make sure that's all nicely mixed in. Okay. Tell your people to form an orderly queue, or actually better still, get the money off them first, okay? Cash in hand is much better, so uh, hopefully you'll have raised a load of money for Founders Day, hopefully you'll have pleased your family and friends no end, and hopefully you've picked up a few skills there which you can uh, use to repeat this, and uh, more than that, hopefully you have a very enjoyable meal. <laughs>